What's up, guys? Crick Diggers coming to you Tuesday morning, afternoon. I'm out here at the hotel dump, top secret location with my brother, man, William Son, where my very first Native American tool ever, Doug, came out right there. Will's uh, effigy, possibly Native American pipe bowl face pipe, came right there. So, I mean, real close. Real close. Well, we connected our holes oh, last yeah, time we were right. digging. We ended right here. So we still have this whole entire area, which just to be on the safe side, just in case there is some kind of Native American site or something going on here, we're gonna go really super slow. And both of us are just gonna take this whole entire area out. It's not as deep right here on the, on the uh, right side. It's kind of sloping up and ending down in this area is the deepest but most of that through there has already been dug there may be a little spot or two still to hit all that's already been dug out all the way over to that tree over there pretty much already been dug so we got this whole entire spot to run up we're gonna see what we can find today guys stay tuned for the action i think it's gonna be a good day here we go i've been here not even a minute you can see will's already on his buttocks but look what he just found. Little clay already. Uh, peewee marble. Little little clay marble, yeah. Little clay peewee marble. I don't think I don't Sweet. think I've ever dug a clay peewee before. Nice man. A lot of clay shooters, but yeah. good deal. I think we're gonna get into some nice stuff today. You see a little mason seal insert right there. Definitely marbles, real good marbles in this dump. And all kinds of cool stuff. We're just gonna keep working at it. I'm just starting to open all this up. Maybe something right there. What is that? Bottom of a big mason jar. Early mason jar too. Stay alive for just one second. We're just getting into the first layer, little layer here. But there is blown in mold, druggist and stuff like that already coming out. So maybe a little bit of an earlier spot. I'm not sure. I'm gonna just keep pushing into it. See that? Med, uh, you know, the Dirty boy areas. Will, guys. Working right here. And uh, looks like he's got, looks to me like one of those Wyeth dosing uh, bottles. He says he's never dug, a, <laughs> dug one of the bottles, just the caps. So this could be his first right here. And it looks to be full. Brother, man. I gotta get. Oh, you should be able to get her out of there. It's soft material. Yeah. It's moving pretty easy. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah. There she is. Oh, that one's embossed too. Yep. John, wife, and son. Blood and mold. Nice, brother. Hopefully the cap's down there for you too. What are, are they just. The cap's the one cobalt? that says a heaping dessert spoonful. <laughs> and it's got one through 12 around it. Cool. Nice, man. Yeah. There you go, Will. Cool. Will's doing there. real good, guys. Three finds already in the first probably half an hour or so. I have I have pulled some stuff, but nothing camera worthy yet. All right, guys. We're going to keep working at it. See you back. Mr. Marbles today, guys. Says he's got another one in the hole. Right there. It's white with some clear. Oh, nice. That's pretty. That another, another one in good in good shape. Good shape. Yeah, it is. You need a little marble spill there. <laughs> nice, William, son. Bury this up near the, I got three marbles for you already, and a pretty cool bottle. Heck yeah! All right, guys, we're gonna keep working at it. See you back. Guys, you can see our progress. We just ripped all this all the way up to where Will's at. And then I came back here, started kicking around down in here, guys. And uh, I think I just pulled something incredible out. So let me show you some of the stuff I've been pulling out first. So I got a lock, or a lock. I got a knife handle, for sure, right there. Then, Check it out. I got a knife, hand forged knife. That's kind of neat. Check that out, guys. That's real cool. 
and then the real kicker check this out look at this guys some kind of an instrument made out of wood it looks like a flute or a clarinet maybe there's even one of the keys on the side of it dang that's real neat don't know nothing about it you guys tell me definitely an instrument though that's cool that's real neat got a couple vervax little butter pat from the hotel cumberland brewing not a whole lot coming out but some neat stuff anyway little milk glass marinello will's got some neat stuff too we'll show it at uh clean up but yeah, i'm just gonna keep tearing into this and see what else we can find that's cool though look some kind of a woodwind instrument see back All right, guys, so my last spot ran out. I've just been doing a little scouting. Here's where I dug that GAR medallion or uh, canteen metal. Will's up there making a little test hole, messing around. And check out what I just got popped out, guys. A little, uh, it's a bracelet, but it's a real neat bracelet. Look at this. It's a snake. It's a Bakelite snake bracelet that's real cool check that out very very fancy serpent bracelet that's neat made out of bakelite right around the turn of the century early 1900s not a whole lot of glass coming out but some neat artifacts today we'll definitely hang on to that bad boy comment down below if you guys know what that is or ever seen anything like it cool see you back guys will thinks he's got a poison in the hole so let's walk over here and see what he's got let's see what this boy's got so i was actually working to uncover Ooh. this this milk or jar or whatever this is so i was taking oh, out yeah. the back and then yeah it's yeah. a double lost poison bro it's a small size too yeah, a little one that's nice machine Will. early machine made yeah buddy cool it's a nice poison right there. Yeah. That's like 30, 35 dollars. Nice. Poison. I might keep this one and sell Sweet. my other one though. Now I'm gonna try to might be a milk. Or, or a jar. Let's see. I wanna see how far if it could oh there's oh, it's broken. Oh it's broke, yeah. It was so a milk. A... No, it was a jar. No, oh, it was a jar. Yeah. I've been pulling a lot of broken milks down there. Yeah, I know. This, this Let me see that poison is... again. You already threw it away? I didn't throw it away. <laughs> Here. Yeah, guys, check out that nice little poison bottle. Both sides are embossed. I think those are sharpened down. Mm. Can't see it. Owen's Illinois. Yeah, Owen, Illinois. It is an early machine made. Poison! Nice, Will. You're killing it today, buddy. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't, uh, wasn't too rough trying yeah. to get that jar out. Good deal. All right, guys, we're going to just keep working at it and see what else we can get. A couple more hours. See you back. What's up, guys? Crick Diggers coming to you Saturday morning. I'm up here at Treasure Creek pretty much dried up there's a little trickle behind me but basically this is where i left off geez i don't know probably three four months ago maybe more but some awesome stuff's come out of here 
this year and uh, I'm gonna continue going at it today for a couple hours anyway before the auction. Gotta get a little bit more footage and uh, I think it's gonna be a great day. So I think Will's gonna join me here in a little bit. So stay tuned for the action guys. I'm gonna flip you around and show you where I'm working today. So basically you can see the little slate shelf. That's the bottom. And then right there's where I left off. You can see that layer all still needs dug out. There's some big, big rocks going up through there. Over here to the left, looks real promising. You can see like old pieces of wood way down in there. I'm gonna watch for arrowheads and stuff because this is a pretty old little stream. And yeah, we're just gonna open this area up. There's a lot of roots. It's gonna be kind of slow going. You can see there's a little bit more glass over this way as well, so might even uh, push down in that way a little ways. See what we can find, guys. Hopefully get some marbles, maybe a coin. That gold diamond ring came out of here a while back, but yeah, it's a beautiful kind of an overcast day. So, all right, we're gonna get at it. See you back. William's son decided to join me. He's down here about maybe 10 feet below me digging. And uh, man, tough going today right now so far. Lots of roots. I'm working over here to the left. I went over to the right and you can see I hit a big, big stone wall. So I think it ends there, but it does continue this way. See there's an old like piece of a shoe or something there. And then right up above it, I'm just working along with my pick, just real slow underneath the roots over here. And uh, just popped that little bottle. Right there, guys. Check it out. It is embossed. It says perfumer. Is that all it says? Oh, look at the patina on that. You can definitely tell it was in a uh, privy at one point in time. Let's wash it off. The Treasure Creek wash station here. Still has the cork inside of it, it looks like, but there's a quick little rinse job. Beautiful perfumer. Blown and mold tooled cork top probably 1890s to about 1905 oh look it's embossed on the side look at that that's cool let me draw that off dang ch selic okay i've dug the selic perfumers but not like that out of new york look at that beautiful so that's a different kind of a uh, almost like a coffin shape C.H. Selleck Perfumer out of New York. First find of the day back up at Treasure Creek. Heck yeah, guys. That's awesome right there. There she is, baby. Gonna just keep on working this layer right here really, really slow. See that? All right, guys, Will said he thinks he has a horseshoe in the side of the bank here. It's either that or some kind of piece of machinery. I don't know. That's awful thick to be a horseshoe. That's what I mean, yeah, but it's... I think you're going to be working on that one in a minute. <laughs> that looks like some kind of a car frame or something intertwined in the roots. Yeah, that ain't a horseshoe. <laughs> Dang, man. Yeah. Good luck on that. Yeah, well, I'm I'm getting back at it. See, guys, I'm just working my way down right down the middle of the creek. Will's just up ahead of me, a little further up, working on the side of the bank. And uh, check it out in my shovel. I got ready to scoop out right there. Marble in the hole, guys. Heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Let's grab it and see what we got. Man, look at the colors on that bad boy. Woo! Beauty. It's like sky blue with a little teal. Some black mixed. Actually, I think that black is uh, maybe like burn or something. Came out of a barrel. Yeah, that's going to come right off. The black is. That's a pretty color. I don't know exactly what all colors that is, but yeah, it's nice. Sweet little marble right there, guys. Treasure Creek. Gives up another one. Heck yeah. See you back.
Guys, I got coming into a little pocket right here. You see, I got a uh, iron stone coffee mug or something sticking out. And then down below it, it looks like it has some kind of like an ornate, maybe a basket weed, little perfume or something. We're gonna just go ahead and try to get it live. Right on the side of the creek, right on the bottom. I don't know if it's full, but it is in, in like a little tiny pocket. So this could be. Got to document everything, just in case. Maybe a little bit larger than what I initially thought. There's a brick on top of it. Digging left-handed, so hopefully my camera work is not too, too bad. Oh, what that is, guys? Huh. I thought it was just like a little tiny face cream or perfume, but now it's looking like it goes up under there a little bit more. I can't feel the back of it just yet. Let me see if I can get this brick out of here and then we'll see you right back. I don't want to damage it trying to record it, so I'm going to take this brick out and then we'll see you right All back. All right, guys, I just pried out. I thought it was a brick. There's a big rock right here. And it's a good thing I didn't pry on that because look, what in the world is that, guys? Look at it going way up in there. Is it ready yet? Or is it still going? I think that may be the end of it there. Yeah, I think she's ready now. There she is. Look at that. Look how pretty that is, guys. That's neat. Milk glass, basket weave. It's got like kind of X pattern going around it. That's really, really pretty. I like that. Check that out. I don't know anything about that one, guys. Comment down below if you do. It is a ground top. It does have a uh, ground top, so probably 1890s turn of the century anyway. Nice, that's pretty neat. Heck yeah. You take it. And then let's see if this one up here is ready. I don't think this one's ready yet either. This stuff looks like it would be easy to dig in, but it is really hard, compact. I mean, the water definitely helps tremendous amount there's roots everywhere I can see that one's broken so I'll just get her out of there yeah that's what it was it's an ironstone coffee cup and a ground top maybe a shaker I don't know maybe a spice bottle that's cool though I like it heck yeah gonna keep working at it just a little bit longer now I gotta get in and get cleaned up for uh, auction time all right, guys. Well, hopefully some more stuff comes out. See you back. All right, guys, I called Will down because you can see I've been taking the creek apart. Looks like a little uh, dog head rolled out, and then right above it. Yeah, you can grab the dog head. <laughs> That's cool, oh, it's, man. It's a, it was a shaker. See all oh, the holes in it? That was cool, shaker. man. That was an awesome. Yeah. That's neat, though. <laughs> Put it up there. Yeah, the dog head poking out here. And then right there something an amber beer blob crown top I'm not sure hopefully it's full i just have the back the side of it uncovered but will's going to do the recording i'm gonna put my gloves back on and get down here with my pick i'm working just right off the bottom and you can see all that piled up debris over the years way up way up all the original original creek bed way down just underneath this layer and i just been slowly, slowly picking away at it. The slop. So 
broken. There's broken stuff all around, but that's a good sign. Means I'm coming into a pretty little trashy spot here. Is it loose yet? No, the neck of it's still going down in there. So it's gotta be a beer or something. Here it comes. Here it comes. Crown. Slick. Slick, yeah. Oh, they're going uh, Or Owen's uh, Illinois. Yeah, Owen, Illinois. Still like 40, 40s, I think. 1940s yeah. beer. Not what we're after, but it is a full bottle. We're just going to keep messing around, guys, for a little bit longer. See you back. All right, guys, maybe about half hour left. I'm just working over, trying to get down underneath that slate and uh, check it out. Pretty sure I got another marble in the hole right there. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a pretty one. Another real pretty one. Check that out, orange and white. I think that's an acro flame. Pretty sure it's an acro flame marble. Treasure Creek, baby. Love it, but it's about done. I'm gonna try to find maybe one more thing. See you back, guys. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for today. I gotta get back home, get cleaned up. I'm going to do a little something special after the auction tonight. I'm going to do a little video on how I clean this stuff up, make it look all pretty. So I ended up with two real nice marbles you can see there. Some kind of little teeny tiny salve jar or something. This is probably my best find today. It's ground top barber bottle or perfume or shaker. Then I ended up with a little pumpkin shaker. Just needs a little cork stopper in the bottom of it there. Very first one I popped out was this C.H. Selleck perfumer out of New York. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Not a, not a whole lot today. I think she's pretty much done. Just that little teeny section right there up to the log. About all that's left been a great great dig treasure creek's been wonderful to me but yeah time to find a new spot now this is always going to be special to me but i don't think there's anything left to dig maybe a marble or two here and there if you can find one down the creek but yeah that's about it guys there's dirty william son <laughs> we're gonna get out of here thanks for watching like and subscribe See you next time, guys. All right, guys. We just finished an absolutely awesome Saturday night auction. And uh, now we're going to do a little tutorial on the bottles I just dug this week. I'm going to show you exactly how to get these bad boys sparkling clean. So, yeah, I got a whole bucket of all of my dig finds. And basically, guys, I'm going to show you exactly how to transform that into an immaculate looking piece of beautiful history. So my ingredients that I use, we'll go over that real quick. Steel wool. You need a steel wool pad. Cut copper. Same exact copper I use for my tumbling. I also use for my hand cleaning method. A little toothbrush so to not be real abrasive with the bottles. And that's it, guys. That is absolutely it. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me make sure you guys can see the sink here. I'll angle you down to the sink. Zoom in just a smidgen so you can see what's going on. I'm going to come over here to the sink. 
put on some lukewarm water not too hot not too cold about room temperature just gonna give it a quick little rinse quick little hand rinse inside and out you can see that's that's not very uh appeasing to the eye at all is it kind of crummy so now we're going to do the magic we got our funnel we're going to add some cut copper down in here i like to go a little little less than halfway on the handshake method you can see there same pretty much the same concept as the tumbler except for i'm not going to add any compound i'm not going to add any polish or cutting compound so basically what we have is just copper cut copper pellets and water and all you're going to do is just cover your hand over top and just shake it just give it some shakes Flip it around, shake it some more, just like this guys, just like that. If you want to, you can go back and forth a little bit like this, back and forth a little bit. Now you can see what's left is on the outside of the bottle, so I'm going to dump the copper out in my seam. I did forget that part of it, you need something to drain your copper out. I'm going to dump that out. I'm going to take my steel wool pad. Now that I've got the inside all nice and clean, all i got to do is just take my steel wool, check this out. And I'm just going to go right over top where the rust and everything is on the bottle. You can be kind of abrasive with it. It will not scratch the glass. You can see how that's cleaning up really, really nice. No real tricks. I'm not using any chemicals. Just steel wool and cut copper. Just like that. One little final rinse in the sink. Check that out, guys. Now we have just a beautiful transformed. Let me shine you up to the light a little bit here. We'll zoom out a little bit. Right there, check that bad boy out. Vervac Bottling Company out of Cumberland, Maryland. Sparkling clean. Sparkling clean water and cut copper. And it took me about, I don't know, less than 30 seconds absolutely gorgeous you can see there guys just super easy no chemicals no abrasive stuff on your hands or anything to breathe in water and cut copper baby that's it that's all it is to it on to the next so sometimes you'll get you know pieces like this for instance a little stoneware a little teapot green glaze teapot lid the only thing I use for that really is my toothbrush and some water. I'll just run some lukewarm water. Don't even need copper for this one. Just stick it down in the water, get it wet. Run my toothbrush around in there a little bit and all the little creases. Give it a quick little rinse. And that piece is done that piece turned out beautiful check that out guys real nice dark green glaze little teapot lid got a little little chip right there but that'll still go for a nice teapot i think i might even have a green one that that'll fit back in the storage so you can see we've got some little odds and ends we've got we got a little uh, shot glass. We got a little Bakelite buckle piece. We got a Marinella 
milk glass. We got a glass shaker and a little saucer. All this going to use the toothbrush for. So I'm just going to put that in the water. I'm going to run my toothbrush over everything. Now, same deal now that I ran my toothbrush over it. You can see there's still a little bit of uh, rust, still a little bit of uh, discoloration in there. So basically all you gotta do is take your steel wool pad and just go right over that. Just go right over that, right over that area. It won't harm the milk glass. It won't scratch it. You can really get down in them grooves right there real nice. Give it a good scrubbing. Get all that rust and burn stuff off of there and have a really for good presentable bottle with that wide opening in there you can pretty much stick your whole finger down in there clean out the inside and that's it guys just needs another little rinse That one's done. Go ahead and get the rest of these cleaned up. Same thing with the little shot glass. You can take your steel wool on that on the inside and the outside. Anything with a wide enough opening to get your finger down in, you should be able to just use steel wool all the way. Now this one does have a flash crack running through it, but I don't dig shot glasses that often. So even though it has some damage, I'll still hang on to that one. That's still a cool little find there. Stoneware saucers, same deal. I'm just gonna take my toothbrush clean that out the best that I can front and back this one's got a nice little stamp on it it looks like So real quick guys, we got the, the stoneware saucer. I just cleaned with the steel wool. We got the marinella I just cleaned with the steel wool and the toothbrush, the shot glass, and the little shaker lid there. Maybe about a less than 30 second clean again. Those are all done. The little Bakelite piece, gotta be a little bit more more uh, gentle with these because they're real brittle, real fragile. If you bend on them or something, they can break. But I'm just gonna lightly take a toothbrush over this one. Let me zoom you in on the sink a little bit here. Maybe you can see it a little better. Here we go. And then, kind of a dingy looking sink, but at least you can watch me. Watch me work here. I'm basically just going in a circular pattern. Really, really nice and gentle. Just to get the dirt to break free.
Oh, this thing's beautiful, guys. I always love cleaning up stuff because you never do know what it's going to reveal. But this one's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, wow. So check this out. It's just a, you know, solid black on the, on the front side. But look at this side. Look at that gold. It's got gold, like, marble-ish going through it. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful right there. And I didn't know that until I cleaned it up with the toothbrush. But, yeah, it's a sweet, probably like a barrette, maybe a hair tie. Some kind of a buckle, I don't know. It's pretty, though. It's always nice when you clean your stuff up and you can reveal that true beauty. Just like the day it was made right there. Put that one away. Go ahead and grab some more stuff. Little tiny Hicks Capudine. Little tiny Hicks Capudine. You see, you can't get a toothbrush in that little opening. So we'll be using cut copper on that one. Just give it a quick little rinse. If you want to, you can go ahead and do the outside with the steel wool. You can see, I just gave it a quick little rinse. It already looks pretty good, but you can see it's still got some remaining dirt and stuff inside of it. That Yeah, you can take pipe cleaners and different kinds of things like that. Maybe even sand or uh, graphite may work, but copper I've found is the best. So you just take you a little tiny bit of copper in your hand. That's what it looks like right there. I'm just gonna make me a little pre-made funnel. And this is such a small bottle, it ain't gonna take very much. I'll just drop a little bit in there. Just wanted to show you guys how to do that. I'll feed all that down into the neck there. And then I'm left with copper inside the bottle right there. I'm gonna fill it up with water there. You guys can see that there. We got the water line filled up and I'm just gonna cup it. Shake that bad boy. Rotate it just a little bit around. Make sure it gets in all of it. Just like that, maybe 10, 15 seconds worth, guys. We're gonna dump that out. In our scene here. We're gonna give it a quick little rinse. And then check this bad boy out right there. Look at that. Just absolutely pristine, baby. Look at that, how pretty and clean that is, guys. Took me about 15 seconds to clean that bottle up. If I'd have been using pipe cleaners and stuff, trying to get up in there, or a coat hanger even I used to use, you're talking probably 10, 15 minutes or more on that little bottle trying to clean it. But it's done. Ready to rock and roll. Let's do this one. Look at this three piece mold. It's got a little star right here on the shoulder there. You can see Lavoris, Lavoris, little toilet water, or maybe even a mouthwash. But I mean, you can see how dirty and stuff that is. So we can give it a little, little rinse off. Go ahead and hit the outside of it with the steel wool. Give it a good little scrubbing for about 10 seconds. Okay, so the outside's real nice and clean. You guys can see the outside's beautiful on this one. From Minneapolis, I think it is. Lavoris chemical company yeah minneapolis minnesota but yeah it definitely needs some copper in there you can see there and then that baby's gonna shine so we're gonna put our funnel down in there oh 
hold a second. My funnel's not not working for me here. There she goes. All right, so I got my copper in there. Now I'm just gonna fill the water up just to pass that. Just like so, guys. And now the magic happens. Cup it. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. Rotate it a little bit. Shake it. Rotate. Shake. Dump it out. And the good thing about this cut copper, it will never, ever go bad. You can use it for the rest of your life. Give that bottle a quick little rinse. Hit the shoulder here real quick with the steel wool. And check that thing out now, guys. Look at that pristine chemical bottle right there from Minneapolis, Minnesota. You just seen it live right there. Crick digger style, baby. Still got a whole entire bucket to go, but you guys get the gist of it. The hardest ones are probably the soda bottles. Look at this one here. Here's a Melamphy Bottling Works. Ice blue, beautiful ice blue one. Look how dirty and disgusting that thing is though. Let's give it a little rinse. Give it a little clean. Let's see what we got. Lukewarm water, room temperature. Gonna give it an initial, initial little rinse out. Maybe hit it with the toothbrush on the embossing a little bit. So there's the initial little rinse out. Looks pretty good. I mean, not too bad, but it still could use some work. You can see it's got some dirt in there, still stuck on it. So yeah, let's let's get us some copper in there. Get some copper in there, guys. Right there, you can see the copper in the bottle. You can fill the water up just above that. Just right there like so. Cup the top with my fingers, my hand like that. Turn the bottle on its side, just like it would tumble. And give it a little shaking, just like so. Look at that. If you want to, you can go back and forth like it. Just keep your hand over the top. Rinse it out. And boom, guys. Look at that crazy, awesome, ice blue Melampies sparkling clean she is now yes sir e bob henry that's what i'm talking about that's how you do it the trav way guys cut copper and water wonderful wonderful for cleaning bottles and steel wool hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial i'm gonna finish cleaning the bucket and uh show you clean up pictures of everything when i'm done but yeah, that's how you do it right there, guys. Thank you for watching so much. Big shout out to my new uh, 
members membership holders i'm going to be doing some special content for you guys real soon and uh thanks for watching like and subscribe see you next time guys